what a massive week of action we've had in the Face It Masters this week. It was it was meant to only be week four, but because of Dallas next week, teams have pulled some of their games forward. We played some of the delayed games, which meant we just end up with this massive concentration of really good games that I think really will help us solve a lot of the power level rankings between a lot of the top teams going into Dallas and also, also going through this Face It competition. Alongside that, we also had a pretty pretty action-packed bit in the middle, sorting out who is going to be competing for the top eight. And when we see the standings at the end of this week, it's going to be an absolute dogfight in these last few rounds to figure out who will be in that top eight. So let me show you the schedule of what we were working with this week. There's quite a lot of action. We were in week four, which in theory was just these games and maybe not too many headline games. But we had, where is it? We had the SSG Twisted Minds pulled forward or, or pushed back I should say and then we also had Ents versus SSG pulled forward we had Ents versus R8 pulled forward as teams are trying to work around their scheduling for Dallas we also had Ents versus Twisted Minds pulled forward so it was a, a really action-packed week so it's for weekly catch-up so I'm going to try and catch you up on all of this action both at the top of the table the middle of the table and we'll, we'll cover all the games we'll cover all the games so we should get into it, shouldn't we? We'll start with New Age against Twisted Minds all the way back at the start of the week. And this was a pretty straightforward one for Twisted Minds. I think Twisted Minds had a pretty difficult week overall. But when I look at this one, while New Age have been on the up, Twisted Minds was a test too far for them. And actually, we see Vigi and Kellen only had one death on Icon World. Kellen only had two deaths all series. So Twisted Minds probably quite happy to take a lot of the dive mirror against New Age. New Age do prefer the dive mirror, but... Twisted Minds better than them on this occasion, and a lot of what we normally see from New Age is very a very monkey-focused dive mirror, looking to punish the enemy monkey. We see Tama counter jumping a lot, but Kellen only two deaths kind of gives the impression that they weren't able to punish Kellen all that much in this series, and as such, ends up being a pretty straightforward one for Twisted Minds. Next, we get Meave Drawn versus the Tough Shells, which was well, we've had a lot of headline clashes. We, this is a clash of the bottom of the table here, and Meave Drawn actually come out on top for the most part. We've not really seen a lot from Meave Drawn to convince us now they had too many good results in them and we're going to get too many wins, but it's actually a really important game for them to win. It won't really change their chances of getting top eight, but fighting their way, fighting their way off the bottom of the table, trying to avoid that relegation, all very important. I think Grigor, aka Gara, had some of the best numbers in this, and I think obviously a big part of why Meave Drawn were able to come out on top on this occasion. Next, we get one of the biggest upsets of the week, I think. R8 Esports took on New Age in a game R8 were very much expected to win. But New Age have been on the up and up despite that loss to Twisted Minds just before. They come into this fixture, they play more of their dive as they always do New Age, and R8 Esports actually match them on a lot of occasions. And it doesn't work out at all for them. It was obviously still a close series, but I think definitely the later in the series we got, we saw more situations where Tama was getting a bit of a Winston gap on ice. Now, obviously, Winston not really a hero we necessarily associate with ice a lot, but New Age very happy to take the dive mirror. Maybe some questions around the draft here for R8, since we have Parisio and Route 66. Did they not want to take maybe a, a less dive-heavy route through some of this? But obviously, they also lost out to pool as well. A really good series. Definitely worth a watch if you missed it live. And New Age, continue that upward trend. Then we get Quick Esports taken on Meta Boys. And Quick Esports have had some struggles so far. But against Meta Boys, they were probably in their comfort zone, getting to play mostly a, a brawl team versus a brawl team. And we actually saw them... Performed pretty dominantly here. I think China and Gogo went deathless on Samoa. Crocs only one death on Hollywood. And when they're in their comfort zone, Quick Esports still look like that team that impressed in OWCS Stage 2. So a good win for Quick Esports here to keep them in that race for top eight. Now, Ents versus Peps actually felt like a complete outclassing. Peps continue to be in this situation where they feel like the tear break. They beat all the teams they should beat, but as soon as they get to the Ents SSG level, they just get blown out of the water. They don't just lose. They don't even make it close. And the difference between maybe Peps and teams who are also in this maybe like sort of top five, like Twisted Minds and Ataraxia, is Twisted Minds and Ataraxia are making these series much closer. Peps kind of get blown out of the water here. And... Not really that close, and Ents had a busy week, and this was a good start to it. SSG had another busy week booked in, but Rockstars actually forfeited this one, weren't available to play, and therefore actually took a game away from SSG, which they'd be pretty happy with with how busy their schedule this week is, and SSG keep on winning. Didn't even have to work for this one. 
We had another upset in this one where Celtas took on Sovereigns. And most people would have had Sovereigns winning this one. Celtas felt like they were kind of chasing top eight, but it, was be quite, it would be quite difficult. But actually here, they put on a hell of a show. They beat Sovereigns. Sovereigns, it is worth saying, had to play with Danid. So they were forced to play Doom in all these maps. So especially once we got to Parisio and it was a, it was a dive mirror, but Sovereigns were locked into Doom. Started to see some of the problems and limitations of the comp come into play. But honestly... A really good, a really good performance from Celtics. I think they looked very organised, very structured. A lot of the same decision making when they ran into certain problems, and also especially I think Podanova, especially on the flex support, really had a good performance and should be quite happy with this one. And maybe Celtics actually starting to make a bit of a case for themselves here for that top eight spot. Sovereign's Week didn't get any easier as they then took on Team Peps. Again, Danid was in for all the maps, and this one was pretty classic Peps. Team below them beat them, no problem. I think FD God only had three deaths all, all series, and really pretty convincing from Peps. Not too much more to say about this one. Sovereign's, from their early high, are now, are now crashing back to Earth. Peps continued their good run, beating Super Shy here. Now, Super Shy are a team who have started to run some more and more problems. Hitori, she's currently in America, which means she's having to play on ping when she can play. Also, Takuno has taken a step back, so they're having to use tools on flex support in a lot of these situations as well. So big problems for Super Shy, but it also just made it pretty easy, pretty easy for Peps as well. Only two deaths for the entire Peps team on Oasis, and straightforward in the end for Peps. Despite their big win earlier in the week, Meevedron found themselves up against an RA Esports and that kind of just dismantled them. I think Ice put up the biggest numbers for this one across the series. And overall, a win RA would have expected and a win they did get. So uh, an important win. Really, once we get to this stage of a competition in this sort of battle for top eight, every win counts. Even if it's against one of the bottom teams, you need to put these results through. Any slip up could be fatal for a lot of these teams with how close it is for top eight. Then we get to Arya versus Quick Esports, which on paper would have been a pretty important battle for that top eight competition. But Arya have actually forfeited all of their games and faced it. They're dropping out of a competition, which means in this sort of crunch match, Quick Esports just get a freebie, actually. Obviously, everyone's going to get the freebie against Arya now, but Quick will be happy to take the win and happy to shoot up the board off the back of that. While a lot of the other top teams have had very busy weeks taking on a lot of their top competition, Ataraxia have actually had a pretty straightforward week and it started with their match against Rockstars, which, as you can imagine, ended very much in a win for them. They keep their record very positive at the top of the table here and not really too much to elaborate on there. Ataraxia obviously have their sights set on bigger things and I think they very much cemented themselves as, as one of the top teams in this competition. Ents continued their busy week against the Tough Shell. It was one of the easier opponents to take on, and this was this was a complete blowout here. Ents were super dominant. This was and this week especially was when Ents' scrimbucks were at their sort of maximum in terms of how well they were performing. So this ended up being a, a complete mismatch. It maybe would have been a complete mismatch anyway, but it was a particularly big mismatch on this occasion. Similarly, we got a bit of a mismatch here as SSG took on Meta Boys. We've seen Fake Jake and Flipper put on a lot of heroics in some of their previous series, but it was. Nowhere near enough to phase Space Station or, or really put them at any risk of dropping this series or even dropping a map. So SSG, a dominant win. Then we have the long-awaited SSG versus Twisted Minds. A round five game taking place this week. People were looking forward to this one for ages. It got delayed. It got delayed again. But we finally got the Battle of the, at the time, two unbeaten teams. And it did not disappoint. It was a great series back and forth. As much as people would still expect SSG to win, given all the changes Twisted Minds have gone through. Twisted Minds were able to clutch out a Gardens on Dive. Uh, but overall, Oasis, I think, was very much SSG's map to win. They had a Venture pick on University. And then they had a tour pick on City Center that Twisters Mice really didn't seem to have a great answer for, which made that map, even though a 2-1, actually two of those rounds were pretty convincing for SSG. Then we get to Iconwold. And I think I think Iconwold, SSG can count themselves very lucky to win. Twisters Mice had a few slam dunk situations, but then landing it's an important pick in one fight. Then Psycho just kind of gets a random pick in the next fight. And Twisters Mines never get to use their ult advantage push to cap out and win Iconwold and force a third map. So Everything works out for SSG when it needs to, but I think it's really worth noting that Quartz on Iconwold, what a game he has had. And despite Twister's Minds maybe not getting a lot of the results they wanted this week, Quartz looks to be in top form. So anyone coming up against Twister's Minds will have to try and stop him. But 
And since she were able to able to absorb all that or absorb all those rails, take all those deaths and win regardless. So I think Twisted Minds will be upset they didn't get a map free here with how close that Icon World was, but an important win for SSG, who very much cement themselves at the top in these power rankings. Then we had Ataraxia against Celtas, which again felt like a bit of a mismatch on paper, but it was actually pretty competitive considering the relative strength of the rosters when you look at this series. So Ataraxia still get the win, they continue their good run, and as we said before, this was one of the more straightforward weeks for Ataraxia, and they continue their clean, their clean sweep so far. Mixed in with their difficult matches this week against SSG and Ents, Twisted Minds also played Meave Draw, and this one was a lot more straightforward as we'd, as we'd imagined. So Twisted Minds win this one, dominant, convincing, not too much more to say. Then we get another important match in the race for top eight, Quick Esports versus New Age. Now, Quick Esports will probably seem that overall trending down, New Age a team trending up, but that's not what we saw in this. We start on the pool, which you have to say probably does favour the type of competitions Quick want to run. They had a bit of a Winston adventure on Sanctum that did not go well at all. But overall, they did look better on the brawl competitions and they were able to seal map one. But then as we looked at the rest of the maps, Parisio and Rialto coming out, it really felt like these maps would suit New Age a lot more. They'd be able to play the dive compositions, force quick esports off their comfort on Brawl. And to be fair, that did happen. That did happen. But quick esports were able to clutch out a lot on the dive compositions. It really felt on Parisio. New Age should have been able to convert it. But when it went to overtime, a Junker Queen swap, if you can believe it, from Crocs, Allowed them to get the full hold, force the draw, and put them in a great position going into Rialto. Then Rialto was an absolute, it was an absolute mess. It was a huge dogfight. But quick esports, they do, and the more hectic it gets, the better quick esports do seem to get. So a very, a very sort of Jekyll and Hyde performance from Crocs. I think there were lots of ugly moments, but also lots of moments where he was the hero. And especially when we talk about this New Age team before, and we always talk about Tama being able to punish and play through the other Winston, you think that would be particularly effective against Quick Esports. But it didn't really work out that way. It became a huge dogfight. New Age maybe got lost in the chaos a little bit, and Quick Esports get an absolutely crucial win on a, a very much a, a high-momentum New Age team. Then we get SSG versus Arya, which was obviously forfeited by Arya, so SSG get their second free win of the week. And it's not like you need to gift SSG wins, but they'll happily take this one and regain a little bit of time in their schedule. So Arya, obviously out of a competition, which is sad to see, but obviously good news if you're an SSG fan. Then we get Rockstars versus Meta Boys, which is another one of these bottom of the table clashes. And Rockstars actually got a really important win. Gucci put up the most impressive numbers. It's worth saying for Meta Boys, they were missing Fake Jake, who has very much been their talisman in some of the su success we've seen Meta Boys have. So without him, Rockstars were actually able to take, take it as a 2 0. So Rockstars will be very pleased with that win. And over these past couple of weeks, as much as Rockstars probably aren't going to start pushing top eight, we have seen Rockstars increase and start to get a couple of wins over some of these lower teams, which probably at the very least cements their place in Masters next season. Then we get one of the more devastating results here. Super Shy, who are in that battle for top eight, find themselves losing to Tough Shell as one of the lower teams. And this was really a culmination of all of their roster issues here. We see a lot of people filling in, Hitori not available, Will having to come in, they're changing who plays. Flex support, who plays tank. They're trying to swap things around to make it work, but it did not work in this series. And as we get to the crunch time of top eight, you really can't afford to be losing series like this that you expect to win. So it's really possible. When I saw this result come in, I was like, maybe Super Shy are just going to have to bow out of this top eight race. The roster issues are going to be too much for them, and they're ultimately going to fall victim to that and not make it. Then we got R8 against Ents, and it's always interesting watching R8 play, well, any team, but especially these top teams because they always have a unique look. And it was Alisu in all of this, and they were playing ball the entire time, and they gave Ents the dive test. But Ents passed with flying colours. I think in big part, Ghost, Kai, Massa, the backline did their job. But I think the real hero of the game was actually Vestler, who played a decent amount of Sigma. And whenever R8 were trying to go in and put pressure on the backline, Vestler was always playing very aggressively on this backline. Not always straightforward on Sigma to push an Anna Brig or a Kiri Lucio type thing, but Vestler was finding consistent value with a bit of help from Kevser, obviously. And I think this was the big part of the big part of the success Ents had because it meant that R8 
what they like to do with Ball is they like to go, go again, force more cooldowns, force more cooldowns, and eventually bleed them out. And Ball is very good at that. But they didn't have time to do that because Vesla was just walking in and killing their backline. So a good adaptation by Ents. And I think an important one for Ents because when we saw Ents against Ataraxia, there were some questions about how do Ents adapt when they're thrown a bit of a curveball. But in this curveball, they smash it out of the park. No problem for Ents here. And a very positive sign maybe going into Dallas where we might have to play against a few more dive compositions. Then we got the big one. The top two in EMEA clash head to head. Round 13 pulled all the way forward to pre-Dallas and Space Station 1. What a series. These, these series between Ents and Space Station, they never disappoint. If there's one game you're going to go watch this week, go watch this game. We started on Busan and it was very much the classic meta we've been seeing a lot of. Ram, Tracer, Cass, Bap, Lucio. And this is when Ents' Scrimbucks were at their peak and... You can see why they won that mirror against SSG. They were struggling. Lots of good plays. It felt like Kevster especially had a particularly good game. But then, once we go over to Hollywood, Ents again. Very good cap. Put SSG on the back foot. Ents full cap with 50 seconds. SSG maybe in a, in a pickle. But then SSG go Malga Venture. And all of a sudden, all that momentum Ents had in the series evaporated. Everything changed when Malga Venture were locked and all of a sudden Ents started to have loads of problems. We saw the burrow in and the drill dash clobber combo getting so much value for Psycho and it really just disrupted Ents to no end. And as such actually put SSG in a situation where they were able to come back and win Hollywood and force it to a map free. Then once we went over to Route 66 we got a bit of what we would expect to see where SSG were able to play a bit of dive and Ents were obviously forced to, to keep playing a ground-based comp. And it went reasonably well for SSG. But then on the attack, Ents seemed to have a lot of good solutions. And I think it's maybe a good indicator if you're an Ents fan. Now, as we go into Dallas, lots of uh, Korean teams and maybe even teams like Toronto are going to look to pick dive maps against Ents. But Ents had a pretty good solution for Route 66 and they pushed them all the way. And SSG ultimately had to press, had to press the Malga Venture button on third to get themselves out of this one. So a good win for SSG. They show they can adapt and overcome and throw in new compositions to keep their opposition on the back foot. But for Ents, I actually think still a really promising sign, especially the nature of the type of maps they won. The ability to do so well on Route 66 against a dive composition, I think is a, a massively important indication for them and for their hopes at Dallas. So a great series, well worth a watch. Really do go check this one out, especially great to see these two teams so close to Dallas as well. Then Twisted Minds against Super Shy, which especially considering all of the roster issues Super, Super Shy were having, you really thought it would be a, a pretty one-sided affair. And to be fair, on Oasis it was. But once we got to Pariso, what a series this turned out to be, or what a map that turned out to be. 5-4, Twisted Minds still come out on top. Again, they do seem to be able to clutch some of these situations, Twisted Minds, when they need to. But the Super Shy team, especially after that early result we talked about, I really felt like I was kind of over the Super Shy. But I think this Parisio in particular, even though they didn't win it, it certainly showed there's still some fight in this Super Shy team, and they can actually maybe make it work a little bit more than you would have, you would have expected. Because then. They take on Celtas, and they win. Pack is on support, Will is on DPS, Tools on tank, and it's a dogfight against Celtas, but Celtas another one of those teams in that top eight race. But Super Shy come out dominant, actually. We have Pack and Zoro going deathless on Samoa, and that's Pack on support, so maybe he's just a, a flex support prodigy. Then we go into this colossal dogfight in Hollywood, which Celtas are able to clutch out. But then it seems like all of the positives we were saying about Celtas fall away. And this was such a missed opportunity, I feel like. Super shy on the ropes, roster issues, low confidence, chaos. Celtas have looked good. They looked organized against Sovereigns. They looked disciplined. They looked like they had a clear idea. But here against Super shy, they fall down. And this might be a really pivotal game, uh, pivotal game in both teams run for top eight. And Super shy may be showing that, actually, I was wrong to write them off earlier. They might well be back in that race for top eight with pack flex support, Will coming in off the bench. They're making it work. And I'm interested to see how far they can really make this work. Then we got another big series pulled forward from round 11. Ents versus Twisted Minds. 
And it was a 2-0, but honestly, Twister's Minds were going blow for blow the entire way. On City Center, it looks like Twister's Minds had it on lock, but Twister's Minds push into spawn in the final fight, try and ignore Kev's to capping, but Kev's to caps. Then as Kev's to comes out from capping, he gets the Pulse Bomb trade. It results in a big dog fight and that eventually Twister's Minds lose, so they're going to feel pretty disappointed they let that situation slip away from them. Then when we get to Iconworld, I mean, Quartz on Iconworld, I mean, Quartz anywhere, but Quartz particularly on Iconworld, same as against SSG. Do not let this man play Iconworld against you. He was in fine form. Incredible plays, incredible trades. Every time Twister's Minds tried to do a dive, they would deal with Kellen, they deal with UB, but it was Quartz who would find the rail. Twister's Minds were able to make so many good opportunities for him, and he kept taking them. But again, as we get on to the Twister's Minds attack, all they have to do is cap second to win. They give themselves a really nice ult advantage situation that should, in theory, be very hard for Ents to deal with. But they lose someone early. Then Crispy goes for an aggressive play where everyone else is fighting bridge. Crispy gets picked off. And then the real fatal error was they commit all their big ultimates in that 3v5. They lose for 3v5. And this provides Ents with a chance to stabilize. Again, in these crucial fights when Ents had to win them all because they were defending, defending the golden box of, I guess, well, I guess loss for them. Kevster just comes out, he gets important trades. Every pulse bomb Kevster needed to hit, he hit, and then he finishes the entire series with a 3k pulse bomb. So a real vintage Kevster performance here. But honestly, I think even though they got 2 0 by Ents, they got 2 0 by SSG, Twisted Minds are really still competitive. They're not quite able to take maps off, but I think when you actually look at the maps they lost, Twisted Minds will feel like they've really fumbled the bag ultimately to not take some of these maps off them and force map free and who knows what happens there. So disappointing week for Twisted Minds ultimately losing to their two biggest rivals, but there are still promising signs there. And the good news is Quartz is still, Quartz is still insane. So they've always got that to fall back on if they get in trouble. After that tough series, Twisted Minds also played Celters, which was really just back to winning ways, a straightforward one for Twisted Minds to finish the week on. So they actually finished with like a relatively even record for the week, despite those two losses, and obviously will put themselves with more than enough wins to get themselves into that top eight, and a chance to see if they can actually close that gap on Ents and SSG once we get to the actual knockout portion of this tournament. Which obviously takes us to the standings. And we can see three teams tied at the top here, all on 11 wins. But crucially, SSG have two games in hand. And ha having beaten all of their closest rivals, they've beaten Ents, Twisted Minds, Ataraxia, they've beaten Peps. SSG should have a pretty clear run to the top of the table as we finish out in this round robin. So SSG in pole position. As we can see, Twisted Minds and Ents still very much in the running, though. Ataraxia, only on nine wins, but likewise also have two games in hand, so have a good chance to push themselves up there. And then we get Peps, who do really serve as this tier break, where they're comfortably ahead, three wins ahead of everyone below them, but they don't seem to be able to be, be, able to get close to these elite pool of teams above them, especially Ents and SSG mostly. So Peps still got a way to go and are really serving as our tier break, but once we get below Peps, Obviously, Pep's in fifth, which means three remaining spots in this top eight. But look how many teams we have in this dogfight. All on five wins right now. New Age, they had to trend up to get here. Super Shy with that win over Celtas actually put themselves in a good position. As you can see, that win from Super Shy over Celtas, even with their roster issue, Celtas would have actually put themselves above everyone if they were able to win that one. Not able to. And only three of these teams can make it. They have managed to separate themselves a little bit from the chasing pack. And I think maybe in these five teams, I mean, especially oh yeah, since they forfeited all their games, but these bottom teams are probably going to stay the bottom four teams. Obviously, they can jockey for a position below that. But out of these teams all joint on five wins, all of these games are going to be life and death. Really, I think RA Esports would have been hoping they would have been closer to this top group than here. But... They're in this dogfight now, which means all the series going forward between any of these six teams, if they play each other, it's so important. It's so important for these teams. And as we get into the final few weeks of round robin, I can honestly go any direction, right? If you ask me to predict this, which teams are getting out, it's really tricky. It's really tricky. I mean, New Age were trending up quite positively. They still got a pretty good win, obviously, over RA. You see, maybe expect RA, maybe New Age to go up. Maybe Super Shy having roster issues. 
Celtics struggling against struggling opposition. Sovereigns also struggling. So maybe it even opens the door for quick esports to come up. There's there's a lot to still be decided. And as we can see, things can be quite volatile with the games. And all of these teams are trading wins with each other. So I think there's no clear power rankings who is the best right now. We're just going to have to wait and see and see how the results end up filtering out these teams. But I think it means there's super exciting action. The games between the top teams are always going to be good games because they're games between the top teams. But this chasing pack, life or death games. Life or death games. So the best thing to do is maybe just look at what games we have ahead of ourselves. So it's a little bit messy at the moment because with a lot of teams going to Dallas, a lot of the schedules are being moved around. So we're probably actually going to see, after a very busy week this week, a little bit of a quieter week in week five. So maybe some of the highlight games to keep our eye on is Ataraxia are going to play Peps on Thursday. RA are going to play Sovereigns. And it'll be really interesting to see who Sovereigns actually play on Tank in that one. Likewise, Super Shy are playing Quick. So uh, we'll miss a lot of the action from the big teams as they'll be competing in Dallas. But in terms of the other teams and that middle and chasing pack for that top eight, I think there's going to be some super interesting games next week. So thank you everyone for joining me. I do appreciate Hopefully that caught you up on all the action. Loads of the full games are actually available on this channel right here if you want to go watch any of them in full. I think there's loads of games this week that are worth watching, especially those Ents and SSG ones where they took on Twisted Minds and where we took on each other. Go watch all of those. They were super good and very important in terms of how the teams are doing and what compositions they're playing as they go into Dallas this weekend. So check out all of those. If you want to watch any of it live, it is on my Twitch. I'll put the link here. And yeah, like, subscribe, follow the channel if you don't already. We're going to keep bringing more FaceIt coverage to you. So thank you very much, everyone. And I'll see you in the next one.